Hello and welcome again to the group exhibit for hydrogen fuel cells and batteries. Uh, my name is Michael Sinclair and I'll be the moderator for this next discussion. Um, everyone, uh, please have a seat of course and I'll remind you again that there is table service for refreshments so please uh, make yourself comfortable. Uh, questions are welcome anytime throughout the discussion so if you raise your hand I can bring the microphone to you so you can pose questions to the guests. My guests today are from Sarah Jen. I have the CEO and the head of R&D. Uh, please join me in welcoming to the stage Oliver Freitag and Sebastian Reuber. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Sebastian. Have a seat, gentlemen. All right, so by way of introductions, um, these gentlemen, I'm really excited for the talk today. They have some uh, very cool new technology that I'm eager to hear about. So by way of introductions, could you please uh, tell us about Saragen, uh, the company and the products that you're, that you're developing? Of course, thanks. Um, so Saragen is a German-based technology spin-off of the Fraunhofer Society. Uh, we are the two founders. Uh, Fraunhofer is our largest investor, and uh, we have one market-ready product, which is an off-grid power solution with 100 watts electric. And we also have a functional prototype of a very small micro CHP unit. Um, the technology we use has uh, very unique properties. It's an SOFC technology that is very compact, it's planar, and uh, it is as well very well cyclable as also having a very large operating lifetime. This is quite unique and that enables us to provide unmet, um, unmatched uh, life cycle costs for the customers and also a very low uh, purchasing price. All right, very good. So um, was there, a, there was an image, yes? Uh, we could have an image, maybe. Uh, we just have an image right here for the, uh, for the screen. Uh, these yeah. gentlemen, you can speak to this. Right, yeah. So yeah. what you can see on the left side is the uh, off-grid power solution. So that's the 100 watt uh, fuel cell operating on LPG and recharging automatically 12 or 24 volt batteries. Uh, it's used mostly for video surveillance, like off-grid video surveillance in remote sites. Um, yeah. And on the right side, you see our what we call a nano CHP solution. It provides 200 watt constant power at 230 volts. And it introduces that into the grid of your house and thereby substitutes the residual, like the, the base power of uh, your house and also provides the, the heat that you need during a day with two to four persons. Yes, and on the next slide you can see that we have a unique compactness of our system. Um, this is our so-called core unit, which consists of the stack. It's a planar SFC stack on top, producing about 150 watt um, DC power. And below the stack, in a so-called tower assembly, we have all the process components that are running in such a high temperature system. On the left hand, we have a very small, uh, um, in, in the size of a matchbox size of a reformer unit, a dry reforming process, where we are reforming uh, LPG or even methane with air to produce the synthesis gas for the stack. And um, this tower consists of several uh, repeat units or the same sheet assembly as in the stack. We have some, uh, we have a strategy of um, repeat um, devices, or repeat sheets that are made up, uh, used to make the re recuperator, the heat exchanger below, and the startup burner that we use to preheat the system. This total system has a size about 800 milliliters, a very small compact size. You can see it here, we have a euro inside in the picture, and it's also a very lightweight system. This is very interesting. It's a, it's a different type of product than other ones that I've seen uh, here at the show uh, so far. So you've described it as a nano CHP system. Um, you know, it's clear that your strategy is different as you go to market. You know, why, do you, why are you pursuing this strategy? Why, why a 250 or, or 200 watt system as opposed to maybe the more conventional one kilowatt systems that we've seen? Yeah, first of all, like, basically it's all about uh, having a good uh, price value relationship for the customer. So uh, first of all, we're addressing uh, 
cost, the, so the price to, uh, that the customer needs to pay to purchase a unit. And of course, a small unit uh, that only provides constant power at 250 watts is much cheaper than a unit that does power cycling uh, up to one kilowatt. Uh, the second issue is that um, with, a, with the German um, electricity tariff regime, it, it, is, it does not make sense to, to feed in any electricity into the grid. So what you want to do is just substitute electricity purchases, because then you earn 30 cents per kilowatt hour instead of only 4 cents per kilowatt hour by introducing electricity to the grid. And uh, so what we can do is, of course, then let this system run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year round, um, producing just enough heat to cover the hot water requirements and not so much heating, really, um, and thereby um, substituting during one year about 2,000 kilowatt hours of electricity, which is almost half of what uh, an individual household would require. So, um, quite generally, what are the uh, main challenges with a maybe typical solid oxide fuel cells, and what is it specifically about your technology that, uh, that addresses those challenges? Yeah, I think fuel cells in general have the challenge of uh, robustness. They have to be robust and they have to be cost competitive. They have to be achievable with a very low price. And that was exactly addressed in the patent 2006 that was made at the front of AKTS and where all the development bases. Uh, following this patent, there was an internal project where we had the, the idea to design a very small scale planner system running on SFC. And, um, and this system has to be lightweight. It, it applies uh, very cheap materials, all the production techniques for the stack or and uh, for the coating of the of the cells uh, is done by very um, by, by processes that can be automated very simply. For instance, screen printing processes or uh, stamping processes for the sheets that we use there. Um, so this is one of the key factors that we addressed, and we have a very unique design where we sandwich the SOFC cell between the metal sheets. And um, during the process, we address the problem, the main challenge of um, term, uh, heat spots or thermal mismatch between the ceramic and, uh, uh, and the metal. And thereby, we have developed special glass sealing coatings that are capable to be very cyclable today. So today, this technology is the, uh, the we have achieved more than 180 full system cycles, which is currently leading among these technologies in the world. And these rough uh, technologies, uh, rough uh, testing conditions that we are applying. So especially we are addressing the robustness, we are addressing the long time um, um, robustness of the system. We have developed coatings that are able to coat these crowfair, uh, chromium metal sheets um, during the process so they're not going to suffer from high temperature corrosion, which is another uh, life limiting um, degradation process for these fuel cell systems. So a lot of your efforts um, you know, must be spent on uh you know, testing the, the system, testing the reliability of the system. Where are you on your path to commercialization right now? Okay, now we're about to sell the first units for off-grid power solutions. Um, we, we currently do the production at the Institute, so that's individual kind of, um, 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 how do you call that, like, like manufacturing. And uh, we're now in, in discussions with manufacturing partners that would do all peripherals and also the steel parts of that. So our, we are concentrating as a company only on the functional coating of the steel that enables such long, long run times and the cyclability. We've spoken quite a bit about um, the, the, the improved reliability of this device. Um, a lot of these devices, of course, do need service. What, um, you know, how often does the device need service and, and how is that addressed in the field? Yeah. So, our, our target is to have at least 40,000 hours of operation that corresponds to approximately five years. And after the five years, you would have to exchange probably the stack of the unit. And in order to do that, we follow a strategy that differs a lot from other fuel cell heating device manufacturers. Um, actually, the, the heating, like the fuel cell, is, is not serviced at the customer side, but is actually taken out uh, from the, the, 
you know, from the house and shipped back to our factory and then serviced in our factory. And that enables us to offer much lower service costs than anybody else. So you're, yes. you're removing the whole stack and sending it back. I guess this is possible because it's so small. It's you know, not no only the whole stack, it's actually the whole power unit. Okay. Our power unit only weighs 20 kilos. And when you look at the, the other fuel cell heating device power units, you'd rather look at um, probably 100 to 200 kilos, uh, which is even impossible to carry like it with two persons. And, and we can just use one single person, very low qualification, and, and ship the unit back to the factory. Yeah. And that is only possible because we make a supplementary system. We are not substituting the, the ordinary heating system in the house. This system is going to, uh, to run further on. And um, we are uh, having a supplementary system that are, is, is made to reduce the power demand of the, of the owner. And the heat that comes along with this uh, CHP system is uh, stored in a storage tank that is usually on site even for, for, for boiling water or for, for heating water. Yeah, that definitely is another, uh, seems to me a, a substantial deviation from the other products that I've seen whereby it's not meant to be a, a furnace replacement or a boiler replacement, but in fact, another device that you put in your home uh, that would have a payback, that would have advantages to the customer. Um, is the, I think you maybe touched on this, but is the power modulated uh, based on the customer's uh, current uh, usage? So yeah, well, our, our current product does modulate the power, and we could also introduce that for the fuel cell for, for residential use. Um, but uh, you know, um, the power that is installed and that is not used uh, is sort of not yielding any return, and, and thereby our philosophy is to have as much as possible a constant operation. OK. Um, so uh, as far as the, uh, the path to market, you, you mentioned that you have a device that's currently for sale and you have other devices in the, in the pipeline. Could you, could you talk more about your future plans for the device? Um, so yeah, um, the, we are planning for a field test with the nano CHP units uh, starting in 2017. We have a functional unit operating already today and we're in talks with several heating manufacturers, not only the large heating manufacturers, but also smaller heating manufacturers, and in, in fact, uh, manufacturers of heating storage devices. So they're very interested in diversifying their portfolio and adding the functionality of power generation into their product uh, to a reasonable price, and that's what we're offering. So we believe that in 2018, we can penetrate the market with larger figures and uh, reach uh, quite large volumes very early because of the low service complexity. Um, we have much lower costs, so we will not uh, need to sell the system uh, subsidized uh, by ourselves. Um, we, can, we can ramp up the numbers much faster than anybody else because um, if the unit fails, the, cust the customer won't care, uh, the dealer won't care. Uh, they would just ship the unit back and, and get it repaired back in two weeks, two weeks after. So the complexity is lower, uh, the worries are lower, and, and thereby we believe that we can really um, be faster than the current players in the market. Yeah. And another feature where we think that we can profit from is that we, the, the, the um, electricity generating core component of the system, the so-called hotbox that I showed you here, this is, um, I, um, the, 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 the core component of the off-grid system is identical to the core component of the CHP system. And basically we have this, uh, this core unit ready, it's already being tested in a, in a very harsh market, which is the off-grid market, very harsh for cycling for ambient conditions. So um, basically we think we can profit from the results in that field and we can probably uh, accelerate our, our production rates because we have uh, two market segments that we are going to supply with this technique, which is w w uh, very challenging usually for the industry to ramp up the production. Um, if you have, if you're always having um, the, the, in the gap between costs and productions. So if I'm a, a consumer uh, in the European market uh, wanting to install this at my house, how much would I expect to be saving on my annual uh, energy bill? Yeah, you'd look at like 2,000 kilowatt hours a year um, at an average price over the next five to 10 years of maybe 34 cents, which converts to 700 um, and. 
20 uh, euros and from that you have to sub subtract of course the the more of gas that you need to to uh, purchase for the electricity generation and uh, you also need to take into account that every five years you need to change a stack probably so that makes it uh, to a net saving of probably 600 euros per year. Okay. Well, that seems, uh, it seems like it could be quite compelling. So actually, I'm very excited about the technology. Um, these uh, gentlemen can be reached for, uh, well, if there's any questions now, I'd be happy to uh, take them. If, if not, uh, these gentlemen can be reached at their booth. Uh, they are over in the Fraunhofer uh, booth. Uh, I, uh, sorry, the... Fraunhofer IKTS booth, which is which is at B40, so it's uh, just down the aisle uh, back that way, um, and they can be reached, of course, there for further questions. Um, the next talk that we have is entitled Fuel Cell uh, Market with Material Handling Segment with Mads Soling Mortensen of M Field Energy. Uh, everyone, could you please uh, join me in thanking these gentlemen for uh, coming on stage with me today? Thank you.